Hey everybody, you're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I have the Parrot Anafi right here in this box. Uh, I've never flown a Parrot drone before, this one, and I'm super excited to try it out and tell you all about it, so stay tuned and we'll check it out. So in the zipper bag, there is how the uh, Anafi sits. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's, it's long, skinny, uh, and speaking of light, I mentioned the propellers are light. The Anafi itself is also pretty light for a drone of this size and with this quality of a camera. It feels, um, feels well made. I would say maybe just a little bit cheap feeling just because it is so lightweight. It, it, it doesn't have that sort of hefty, more solid feeling that some other drones have. But you know, that that shouldn't be a reason to judge it. Um, and the lightweight is certainly gonna give you some extra flight time. Uh, and there it is. It's got uh, on the front here, it has what they're calling a three axis stabilization for the camera. Now, three axis stabilization, don't let that fool you. This is a two axis gimbal. This gimbal uh, only rotates that way and that way. Any sort of yaw rotation, uh, which would be the third um, axis that it would that it would compensate for if it were a three axis gimbal, is done electronically through electronic stabilization. So this is a two axis gimbal with electronic yaw stabilization. Is that a huge deal? No, the, um, the, the Spark has a two axis gimbal and the footage looks pretty good. And in my experience so far, the footage, footage does look pretty good on this. Although when you, when you turn it quickly, if you're flying and you're, you're uh, yawing left or right at a good pace, that uh, electronic image stabilization can't keep up. And so you get kind of choppy footage when, when you turn too quickly. So I do wish it had a three axis, but we'll move on from there. It does come with a little lens cover that covers up the camera lens and it um, does have a threaded lens. And one of the really unique things about this guy is it actually uh, has the ability to rotate up and down to tilt all the way down straight below and all the way up straight above. And there is, because of the way the props are uh, placed where the, where the arms and the propellers are, you never see the props in your shots, which is pretty nice. That is a problem on just about every other drone I've ever owned, especially if you're flying in sport mode pre pretty aggressively. Um, the Parrot doesn't have that issue. The Anafi, um, they've, they've figured out a way to keep the center of the camera, or the lens of the camera, kind of in front of where you might see those things. So that's actually a really good thing um, in terms of the fact that you don't have to worry about getting props in your shot. Um, it comes with this battery that is very easily removable. You just push a button on it, and then there is a slot for a micro SD card in there. Kind of an odd place for it because it's not actually a slot. It's like one of these little things where you have to lay it on there and close this holder on top of it. I'm not a big fan of how that goes in there, quite honestly. But uh, it does work if you know what you're doing. And y you can accidentally break this little um, metal piece off, which I did. And I say break, it just came off and it has to be placed back on. There's two little two little um, pins that you have to put the sides into. Bit of a pain, you know, I gotta put on the glasses and reading glasses and kind of really get in there. I wish it was just a slot like every other drone. It is brushless, of course, uh, brushless motors. And as I said, the propellers are held on by these little, um, these little pins and each propeller is made up of two components or two components. And you know, technically these aren't propellers. Propellers go on the front or the back of a plane and propel it. These are rotors, but uh, I'm calling them propellers because that's what everybody calls them. The motors are pretty small um, and they do seem to be well ventilated. It um, does have the ability to zoom with the camera. So as you're flying along, you can zoom in and zoom out digitally. Now it's not an optical zoom. It's not actually moving the lens or anything like that. It's just a digital zoom. And I will say the quality is not bad for a digital zoom and it's kind of a unique thing on the market. So I have made a list of pros and cons that I want to go through about the Anafi. And there are a lot on both lists, both pros and cons. Um, number one, I'll start with the pros. This thing is really fast and it is really fun to fly. It, uh, it banks a lot when it's turning, when you're in sport mode. By the way, it comes preset in uh, what it's calling film mode, which everything moves really slow, and I can see why they do that, because you wanna get smooth footage. 
uh, but when you turn up the settings and you fly it in its fastest uh, settings, it really races. It goes, uh, I believe it's supposed to go up to uh, 30 miles an hour or 50-ish kilometers per hour. That's, that's pretty fast for this little drone, and it's also quiet. Um, it's way quieter than the Mavic Pro, way quieter than the Spark, um, way quieter than the Mavic Air. It's not as quiet, I don't think, as the Mavic Pro Platinum, but I don't know, I should do a sound comparison between the two, because it, it is surprisingly quiet. Uh, maybe it's these really thin propellers that do that, but I like that. I, I'm, I'm kind of tired of super noisy drones, and so I appreciate that this one's a little bit quieter and a little less of a disturbance when you're flying in a park or something like that. Um, it does have this ability to tilt the camera 180 degrees from straight up to straight down, and you might wonder why would you want to do that? Well. I don't know. That's a great question. I think you could get some interesting shots with the camera tilted up. Um, you know, flying under trees, flying under birds, flying under a bridge, um, that kind of stuff. It might look kind of cool from that angle. Um, I don't know. It's it's something I've not seen before, and I think there are a lot of creative out people out there that might be able to utilize that. So it is a definitely a pro as far as I'm concerned. Uh, next thing I'll say is that the app is pretty good. Um, there are a lot of really shoddy apps out there for different drones, especially the toy drones. Uh, this one is better than a toy drone app for sure. It's 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 uh, You can tell they put some thought into it, they put some time in it, and that Parrot is more of a dedicated drone builder and not a toy maker. Um, the app is a little bit confusing in some parts and there are a few shortcomings of it. Uh, one being that uh, when you hit the land button in the app, it just lands right away. It doesn't ask you if you want to land, which uh, I accidentally hit it. And fortunately, I was over land when I did it and it landed. Uh, and I was like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. If I had been over water, it wouldn't have been great. Okay, so I just want to show something real quick on this guy. Uh, how it reacts when you push the land button on the controls. So Troy's going to hit the land button and we're going to watch what it does. Yep. So did it ask you if you actually wanted to land? Yeah, uh, no. It it just it just landed. Very quickly, right? Very quickly. <laughs> yeah. So there are some improvements they can make to the app, but overall, I feel like the app is an asset. Um, it has a decent battery life. You can get uh, pretty close to 30 minutes on this thing, flying, um, you know, in uh, both sport and film mode. And uh, I think it has to do with the fact that the battery is not huge but this thing is pretty lightweight and most of the weight is the battery. So uh, I think it's small form factor and it's lightweight gives it a pretty good amount of battery life as you're flying. You can also charge this guy via USB-C. You can charge it while it's sitting on the drone. You can just plug it right into a USB port uh, right here in the back. And you can also charge the remote control via USB-C. That's a really, really nice thing. And the reason that is so nice is because a, it's a common charging cable, so you don't have to worry about proprietary charging cables. And B, you can use power packs. You can use little portable um, USB chargers that uh, might not even have a huge pack a huge punch, but if you have one of those bigger ones, you could definitely charge both these guys and keep flying. So I like the fact that you can charge these via USB-C and that you can take, um, don't even have to take the battery off to charge the one that's on the drone. As far as the camera quality goes, um, this isn't a big camera test, but I will say that it's you know right in line with what you'd expect for a drone of this year, 2018, 2019 period. Um, and and uh, I, I don't think it's exceptional footage, um, but it does shoot 4K, it does shoot nice 1080, it does, um, it does do HDR, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But I'd say that the camera quality and the stabilization is is uh, is on par with any other prosumer slash high end toy drone that is out there. So um, if you're looking for something to film with, this this can get the job done for sure. Again, I mentioned the digital zoom and the HDR. Uh, HDR is a differentiator. HDR stands for high dynamic range, and what that does is it basically creates uh, a file where the dark spots get lightened a little bit and the light spots get darkened a little bit in the file. So if you have a bright sky and a dark shadow, um, the camera will uh, darken the sky a little bit and lighten the shadow a little bit so you can see everything better. I'm not a big fan of how the HDR looks on this thing. I think it looks oversaturated, but it does have it and it's kind of a cool feature because if you are flying in real contrasty situations, that could certainly come in handy. So those are kind of my pros on the Anafi. Now let's go through the list of cons. Um, 
and there are quite a few of them, unfortunately. Number one, this whole thing with the micro SD slot being right there and being uh, not even a slot, but just being a, a space where you put the micro SD, that is just a pain. It's hard to get in there, it's hard to get out. It makes me not want to remove it. Um, and again, this little metal piece very easily comes off, could easily be lost. It just seems like an afterthought, and I'm surprised that they uh, that they did it that way. You know, that they couldn't put in like a little angled slot or something. I guess engineering-wise, this was the easiest way to do it or what they had to do. But I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I will also say that the battery, because the whoops, battery's not super hard to get on and off. It takes a little doing, but because the the release button for taking it on and off is up here and the power button is back here i've accidentally started this thing numerous times when i was trying to take the battery off or put the battery on and you know it fires it up and i'm kind of of the opinion that once you start some sort of device that has um motherboards and chips and all that you know logic in it you should let it finish booting up before you shut it down so you don't shut it down midway during startup so in that case i let it sit there finish its whole boot up process and then i turned it off kind of a pain um, i wish that this had the it's just one touch and it starts right up not the double touch that some drones have where you hit it once fast and the second time you hold it down that would certainly make a lot of sense. As a matter of fact, if you think you're just gonna be checking the battery level by pushing the button, you're actually gonna be starting it if it's on the drone. As I mentioned before, there are a couple things in the app that I wish were different. Uh, one is that uh, it doesn't warn you when you hit the landing button. You know, It doesn't ask you if you're sure you wanna land or did you accidentally hit this button and it just lands. And then also it doesn't have, at least I haven't found, now I could be wrong and maybe I just need to go deeper into the menu, but I didn't get any warning for a low battery. It just goes down to a certain point and then it tries to land itself or you just look at it and you go, oh, I'm at 4% battery, I better land, you know? Um, you'd think that you would get a warning at 10, 20%, you know, so that you could at least say, okay, I need to I need to get in. As I said before, the HDR footage to me looks oversaturated and unnatural. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I'd much rather shoot in the normal footage, which I think looks pretty good, um, but I wish if they were going to put HDR in it, they could do HDR that looks really pops. You know, the whole point of HDR is that the bright scenes, you can see the detail in the clouds in the sky, and you can see the detail in the shadows on the ground, and you can see them at the same time. You don't have to expose for one or the other. I feel like they put it in there, but it doesn't really, it's not something I would ever use because again, it all just looks kind of oversaturated and just unnatural in my opinion. Another con is it has no obstacle avoidance. And you know, I flew drones for a while, uh, quite a while before obstacle avoidance was a thing, and I had no problems really, you know, few crashes, but not too many. I, I've, you know, always been very conscious about that. The problem is I've gotten used to obstacle avoidance. And so now if I'm flying close to myself or close to a tree or close to a wall, I'm thinking, wow, this thing uh, is gonna stop itself. And then I have to be reminded, oh, it's got no obstacle avoidance, not even in the front. And so you can smack right into anything you fly towards. It's not gonna stop itself. And so be careful with that. If you're used to flying a, a drone with obstacle avoidance, keep in mind this one does not have it and it will smash into anything you push it towards. I really like the remote. I feel like these buttons and the tilt and the zoom and all that stuff are well done. My only gripe about the remote is it doesn't come with a case. So you have this nice case to put the Anafi in. Um, you can throw this in your backpack, but these sticks aren't protected at all and they don't unscrew like, um, like the Mavic Air does. And so if you could unscrew these and store them inside, then this thing would be kind of flat and it would sit very well in a backpack and you wouldn't have to worry about it getting damaged. But the way it is right now, I do worry a little bit about these sticks getting smashed by, you know, something else that I have in my backpack. So I wish that Parrot had included a case for this or the ability to unscrew these and store them somewhere. And then this could just sit inside and you don't have to worry about it. As I said before too, it is a two axis gimbal with electronic image stabilization for the yaw. And to me, that's a big minus. Um, it's it's uh, claiming to have three axis stabilization and it does, but it really would have been nice if this thing had been built with the three axis gimbal. So I feel like I need to put that in the cons column. Um, if you are flying and you are yawing, you'll definitely see where it kind of stutters because it's trying to compensate electronically with something that normally on a three axis gimbal um, mecha uh, mechanics would be doing. Some, it would physically be compensating. So uh, two axis gimbal, similar to the um, DJI Spark. And then my last con has to do with the phone. 
and the clip on here. The phone doesn't fit very well into this thing. This, this surface right here is flat and it's annoying because when you put a phone in, especially if the phone has a case on it, it tends to kind of pop out, which is not something you want to have A, happen to your phone, period, but B, especially when you're flying. So I'm not quite sure why they did it that way, if they were just trying to be universal with all phones or um, and it's not even like it's that big so you could put a tablet in there. It's not really designed for a tablet. It, it seems like they should have put like sort of a lip or something. I don't like the fact with um, DJI products that you generally have to take your phone out of the case to put it into the holder for the Mavic Pro or the Mavic Air or even the Spark. Um, if they had built something here where you could leave the phone in the case and it would still sit in here and you wouldn't have to worry about it falling out, I'd be a big fan, but they didn't. They made it kind of weird. I have to take it out of the case to really fit in here and even then I'm worried it's going to pop out. So that's one thing I wish Parrot could have uh, modified when they built the phone holder. So don't get me wrong, this is a really fun drone to fly. It's really fast, it's really agile, and the video quality is, is pretty decent. My beef with this drone isn't the drone itself as much as, as it is the price point. Um, Parrot could have been that sweet spot between the Spark and the Mavic Air, but they chose instead to butt themselves up against the Mavic Air, just $100 less than the Mavic Air at $699. So basically, you can get a Mavic Air for $100 more, and I'll talk more about that in a comparison I'm doing between those two, or you can buy a Spark for $300 less for $399. And I feel like if they had priced themselves at $499 or $599 even, or even been competitive with the Spark at $399, they would have themselves a winner. But by pricing themselves closer to the Mavic Air, yet not having the performance of the Mavic Air, I feel like they really did themselves a disservice. And honestly, I'd look very hard at the Mavic Air or at the Spark before you buy this thing. Because if you're cost conscious, the Spark is a great deal at $399. And if you want more features, and I feel like more than $100 worth of features above and beyond what this does, you should take a look at the Mavic Air. If you fly on Anafi or if you've flown one, or if you have a strong opinion about the Mavic Air or the Spark compared to the Anafi, I'd love to hear the comments in the comments section below. And of course, if you like this video, I certainly hope you'll subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. We're gonna be doing a full comparison between the Anafi and the DJI Mavic Air. And I might even do one between the Anafi and the Spark just for fun to see how those all kind of stack up against each other. Uh, please like this video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.